Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this afternoon's virtual media conference with Dr. Chris Mackey, Medical Officer of Health at the Middlesex London Health Unit and the Mayor of London, Ed Holder. We'd like to welcome the media who are joining us this afternoon. Thank you for tuning in and we remind you to submit your questions using the question forum here on Microsoft Teams. And if you could please indicate your name and your media outlet as well as who your question is directed to. Uh, oh, also welcome to those tuning in this afternoon on Rogers Television as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, listeners on Global News Radio AM 980 CFPL, and those who are watching on the CTV London website. Let's begin with our opening remarks and we'll throw first to uh, Mr. Ed Holder, Mayor of London. Mayor Holder. Well, thank you, uh, Dan. Good afternoon, everyone. A few things I'd like to cover today. First and foremost is Thanksgiving weekend. This is more than advice or even a simple suggestion. It's the strongest recommendation I can urge, delivered as firmly and directly as I'm able. Please stay home this Thanksgiving. Please don't travel out of town. Please stick to members of your household only. The stakes this coming weekend have never been greater and we absolutely cannot afford to get this wrong. Numbers are creeping up again here in London while case counts across the province are setting new records. This is serious. And as always, it's not enough if some of us do the right thing or most of us do the right thing. This requires all of us to do the right thing. Look, Londoners have stood really tall through a number of special occasions and holidays through the course of this pandemic from St. Patrick's Day, Easter, Ramadan, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Canada Day, it sounds like all the high holidays and events of the year. And we need to treat Thanksgiving with the same commitment and the same discipline. So on another topic, I'm actually pleased to report that the City of London has extended temporary measures allowing outdoor patios to stay operational at least until December 31st. This extension is designed to help local restaurants and bars continue to serve safely as many customers as possible in the months ahead. Our local businesses uh, continue to face tremendous pressure and we're looking to help any way that we can. That's our commitment. And our back to business team uh, here at the City of London is here to provide efficient, flexible solutions. And look, we'd invite businesses to get in touch with us and let us know how we can assist. Finally, and staying with the economy. We're going to uh, provide our latest updates from Stats Canada tomorrow on how London's economic recovery continues to unfold with the release of employment figures for the month of September. Over the previous two months, July and August, we've added 18,100 uh, jobs, meaning more people were employed in the London region over this past summer compared to the same time last year. But that said, we're still 10,000 jobs shy of where we were before the pandemic really took hold in March. We're hoping to see that number further reduced once we get figures for September tomorrow morning. Regardless of what those numbers reveal, we're continuing to work with over 150 local individuals, businesses, and social agencies as part of the London Community Recovery Network. This is a community-driven recovery effort that has both a short and a long-term focus. In the short term, we're identifying citywide recovery ideas, while in the longer term, we're working to develop a community recovery plan for a strong, resilient London. We expect to have a comprehensive report along with action items ready by December. But in the meantime, and as always, I encourage anyone who is in need of employment, particularly now that the CERB benefit has finished, or if you know someone looking for a job, visit londonjobsnow.ca. It's never important than it has been today. Dr. Mackey, if I could, please, over to you. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, happy to answer any questions about the case counts today. Of course, we have a new record provincially, uh, so I'm sure there'll be questions about that, but I want to skip straight to our main item for discussion today, which is the two cases in the school in the London area. Uh, these are both schools uh, within the Conseil, well, both cases within the school within the Conseil Scolaire Viamonde. This is the French uh, language school board that serves all the way from GTA up to Barrie and to Windsor. Uh, Ecole La Pomerie has now had two confirmed cases of COVID, uh, both in staff. Students have not tested positive at that school. 
by this point. Uh, the first case was reported earlier this week. Uh, thank you to those in the media who covered that case. Uh, the second case just came to us late last night. Uh, affected uh, students and or staff have been informed about their contact, uh, those that have had close contact with the case. Uh, the individual was not present during the school day, uh, but was involved in a program that uh, did uh, supervise students uh, after hours at that school. Uh, at this point, there's no link between the two cases. They've came on, come on on a similar timeline, uh, but we can't find anything that indicates that there's been any contact between the two individuals who have tested positive. And so at this point, uh, we're not declaring an outbreak at that school. And of course we will uh, if and when information becomes available that uh, makes that link between those cases and or anyone else uh, positive at the school. <coughs> Altogether, there are uh, less than 30 close contacts at the school that are being asked to isolate and to be tested for COVID-19. Uh, we should have test results back uh, within the next two days that'll help to make any further uh, determinations of what might be necessary. At this point, it's uh, we don't have uh, data that would show that it's required uh, to close the entire school, but of course, uh, that is always a consideration uh, and won't be uh, we won't hesitate to do that uh, if we need to. Dan, I'm, I'm sure there are questions, so I'll pause and uh, Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Thank you, Mayor Holder. Well, we do have several questions that are in the queue. And again, a reminder to the media in attendance to submit your questions. Hover over the center of the screen. You'll see the little question and answer icon on the right side. All you need to do is click on that and submit your question, indicating again your name, your media outlet, and who your question is directed to. Let's get to the questions. De uh, Jennifer Beeman from the London Free Press has our first question. Dr. Mackey, it is for you. Dr. Mackey, what should Londoners make of the last three days of double digit daily increases? Is test processing part of the reason we're getting these totals or is it an indicator of wider community spread? Okay, clearly te te test um, processing is part of the timing of us receiving these uh, cases, but uh, I think overall, I mean, we know that there is ongoing uh, wave two activity in our community. Uh, the character of the cases continues to be a mix of post-secondary and young folks uh, with some that are affecting uh, older age groups, but still primarily circulating among the young. So uh, the three previous days don't really change the picture from an epi epidemiological uh, perspective. All right, the next question uh, is a follow-up from Jennifer Beeman. Again, Dr. Mackey, for you, of the 31 cases reported from Tuesday until now, how have people encountered the virus? Do we know if it's close contact, travel, outbreak related, or no known origin? Yeah, there are only a handful of those 30 cases where we haven't been able to make a link at this point. A uh, vast majority have had close contact with a case uh, or with each other. Uh, there was, uh, you know, a couple of those uh, situations are household spread. Um, I mentioned there are a number of post-secondary students uh, among those 31. And, uh, and then uh, a trickle of cases where people have had uh, no known exposure. There are not a lot of uh, travel associated cases in the, uh, in the last few days. All right, thanks, Dr. Mackey. Another uh, quick follow-up from Jen Beeman. Given the major increase, Dr. Mackey, in testing this fall compared to what we were completing in April, is it apt to make direct comparisons between the daily case counts in April and in October? Yeah, when we when we look at the case counts now and those in April, what is most striking is that we we don't see the same number of hospitalizations, ICU visits, or deaths that we were seeing in April at similar case counts. Uh, so that really s strongly suggests that there's something uh, different about the second wave. And, you know, as you point out, the amount of testing um, is is probably the main difference there, Jennifer. Uh, we are in general seeing cases test positive in younger age groups 
Uh, but that's in part a, a function of the fact that we are testing people in younger age groups uh, much more than we were in the first wave because the uh, test results for uh, the test capacity was being reserved in the first wave for those at greatest risk. All right, uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, Dr. Mackey, this one is also for you. It comes to us from Steve Young at CTV London and News Talk 1290 CJBK. Dr. Mackey, the two cases at Ecole Elementaire La Pommerie, are they linked? Also, what is being done to deal with the two positive cases being reported in one school? Yeah, so the two cases at this point, uh, we have not been able to identify a link and we've had extensive discussions with both of those cases. They're involved in quite different parts of the school in terms of their functions and no interaction between the two cases. Uh, the, the other thing, of course, that this is uh, flagging for us is a need for a deep dive into how protocols are implemented at this school. Uh, when we first started investigating, it looked like there might be an issue with screening staff uh, who have symptoms, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, none of the none of the staff involved in uh, neither of the staff in, in these two cases attended the school uh, while they had uh, symptoms. Uh, one of them developed symptoms before leaving on their shift. Of course, reported that appropriately to a supervisor and uh, is uh, you know been isolating ever since. Uh, so at this point, we haven't uncovered any systematic issues that might be leading to these two cases. Uh, we will definitely keep digging and making absolutely sure that all appropriate protocols are followed here. All right, thank you for that question, Steve. Let's go to our next question. Mayor Holder, uh, this one is for you. It comes to us from Kirat Walia at the Western Gazette. Uh, Mayor Holder, are students also expected to stay in London and what precautions should they take if they do leave? Uh, uh, Kurt, uh, thanks for the question, uh, Kurt. I appreciate that very much. Firstly, uh, uh, the recommendation that that we are making stay, uh, uh, is on behalf of all Londoners, be they Western students, Fanshawe students, uh, stay home and London is home. Uh, if in fact you do uh, uh, decide to go outside of London, uh, we have those protocols that we've been talking about before. We've gotten recent provincial requirements of no more than 10 people within a household. We've talked about safe uh, physical distancing. We've talked about wearing masks. We've talked about the hygiene. All of those things stay uh, uh, stay in place. Uh, I've had uh, recent uh, discussions with the president of Western and the uh, executive of the University Students Council and uh, my recommendations are still the same. When it's possible, stay at home this Thanksgiving. Do your Thanksgiving a different way. Do not travel out of town. Thank you, Mayor Holder. Dr. Mackey, I know that there's been a lot of discussion around Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving plans around the health unit. I wonder if you had anything that you'd like to add to what uh, Mayor Holder just said. I don't think so. I mean, you know, as we've seen throughout this pandemic, it's the movement of people that really spreads the virus. Uh, and uh, and of course, that crucial metric of how many close contacts an individual has uh, when they test when they end up testing positive, the really determinants is this outbreak going to continue spreading or is it going to wane? And so it's up to all of us to limit our travel, uh, limit our close contacts, and in particular, please avoid those four hot spots of Toronto. Ottawa, Montreal, or Quebec City, where we know the rate of illness is so high. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Holder and Dr. Mackey. Uh, again, if you are a member of the media joining us this afternoon and you have a question, uh, now would be a good time to get that in because we are getting down to the end of the questions. And uh, if you've got one that you wanna ask, you wanna make sure that you get that submitted as soon as possible. The next question, uh, actually it's a series of questions coming to us from Lini Lamberink at CBC London. Uh, all right, so here we go. I'm thinking this is for Dr. Mackey. Uh, Dr. Mackey, first off, when did the most recent staff member at the French school test positive? When did they last supervise students? Were they symptomatic at work? What repercussions could they face if they were symptomatic at work? Yeah, so uh, the last, uh, the, the most recent staff member tested positive 
uh, yesterday we were notified late yesterday uh, about that positive result. So that person would have been tested uh, the day or two previously. Uh, that person last supervised students uh, on the uh, 28th of September. So one reassuring thing is that we haven't had any cases come forward in students since that time. We were actually reaching uh, pretty close to the two week period. Uh, and uh, in terms of the last uh, two questions, again, uh, no one has come to work while ill. Um, the uh, symptoms developed uh, while at work at the end of shift and uh, nobody has violated protocol here uh, from what we've been able to determine. All right, thank you, Dr. Mackey. Uh, and thank you, Mayor Holder. That uh, actually brings us to the end of our questions this afternoon. And again, we want to thank you for joining us for this afternoon's uh, news conference. Uh, a reminder that with Holiday Monday next week, our virtual media briefings will be and Thursday and uh, not on Monday, so you can celebrate with the people in your household uh, a very happy Thanksgiving. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving.